Welcome to In Your Neighborhood. I'm your host, Sharla Brown, and on today's show, we are talking with the Alzheimer's Society. My guest today is Deanna Bessel. She's the Public Education Coordinator. How are you today? I'm great, thank you. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for being on the show. Thanks for having me. So it's so great to have um, the Alzheimer's Society on the on the show. I've been wanting to cover you guys for a long time, and because uh, I think it's really important to always get out to the community, the different organizations that's here, because you don't always... Uh, uh, necessarily need them right now but it's good to know that they exist here in the city so maybe let's talk a little bit about what the role of the Alzheimer's Society is. Sure we're a nonprofit organization and we support people living with dementia and their care partners through the journey so we're there as a resource to provide education and support. Fabulous and uh, do you just service Thunder Bay or do you service the entire northwestern Ontario region? We service Thunder Bay and also the district. So our catchment area is we serve the township of Atacokan and we go as far east as Uppsala and then we go as far west as Manitouage and we also service some northern communities as well. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. So um, how many people, just kind of putting things into perspective, in the region live with either Alzheimer's or dementia? Well, the current statistics state that there are around 2,800 people wow. living with dementia in Thunder Bay. Wow. Mm -hmm. So what happens with these two diseases and, and what are some of the differences between the two? Because I have to be honest, when I was doing all my, my research, you know, I'm not even sure, you know, and I, I think that sometimes there's a lot of misunderstanding when it comes to all, um, Alzheimer's and dementia as to that these are two separate diseases. Right. So dementia is actually not a disease. It's a set of symptoms that accompanies a disease. Mm -hmm. The symptoms of memory loss, impaired judgment, impaired speech and disorientation. So an example example I like to give for people to understand better is shortness of breath and asthma. Shortness of breath isn't a disease, it's a symptom of asthma, but there are also many other causes of shortness of breath. So that's just like dementia. Dementia has many different causes, one of them being Alzheimer's disease. Wow, mm -hmm. that's, that's good and very important for, for people to know. Um, so maybe let's talk about some of the, the warning signs. So talking about dementia, a lot of those things that you just mentioned, people might just think that, well, it's just getting old. You know, that's what normal aging is, is about. So how mm -hmm. do you know when it's one or when it's the other? Right. So there are changes that happen naturally when we age. Our brain gets older. So there are changes. So normal aging, that consists of forgetting friends' names sometimes, forgetting people's birthdays, having trouble focusing when there's distractions in the room, um, going down to the basement to grab something, and then when you get there, you forget what you went there for. Right. right. That's I think we can all have those days. Exactly. Exactly, that's all normal aging changes. So when it comes to changes regarding dementia, there are differences. So with dementia, you're gonna see memory loss that affects your day-to-day -day ability. So it takes a long time to get things done because you're being very forgetful. Um, you might forget how to do an activity that you've always done, say cooking breakfast in the morning. All of a sudden, those steps become too complex. So that could be a change you're experiencing. You could be losing things a lot and in strange places, like finding keys in the refrigerator, right. things like that, different um, places you would never think before. Um, you might also see changes in people's personality. They might become quick to anger when they never used to. So again, just a change from their, their baseline, a change from their normal. Right. That's when you should, should say that, oh, this, this isn't normal, I might need to get some help. And what would that kind of help be? So, you know, um, if somebody's noticing that themselves, or maybe it's uh, somebody noticing that in a parent or a grandparent, mm -hmm. you know, what are the next steps that someone should take? That's a great question. So if you're recognizing that in yourself or a family member is recognizing it in their loved one, make an appointment with the doctor because it doesn't necessarily mean that they have Alzheimer's disease. It can mean many different things. There are many medical conditions that can cause dementia. So if medications aren't interacting properly, if someone is experiencing a depression or a thyroid condition. So there are many metabolic conditions that can cause dementia symptoms. So we always say make an appointment with your doctor. The doctor will do a full medical workup, see if something medical is happening, and then he'll do a few cognitive tests. Based on those results, he might send you to see a geriatrician, where the geriatrician will assess you further. And what does those um, tests kind of look look like? So if somebody's like, "Hey, I, I you know, I want to know what I'm going to expect when when." I get assessed. What what do those tests look like? There are various tests. Um, some of them are test your cognition, spelling words backwards, um, things like that. They might ask you current questions like what year it is, where are you right now, um, and then again the geriatrician has further testing that he will do for you. Okay, mm -hmm. good to know. Mm -hmm. Now. 
there's a lot of stigma around uh, these diseases. And uh, I think it's important like for, for each of us to kind of know different ways that we can re reduce this. So what are some things that um, we can do to do better in that department? Well, I think right now is a great step, education. I think knowing about the disease is the most important part. I think a lot of stigma comes from fear and from not understanding what someone is actually going through. Mm -hmm. So educate yourself on the disease as much as possible. Be a friend. So if you do know someone that's diagnosed with dementia or Alzheimer's disease, be a friend, be there for them, support them. Because they're not going to need help right away, but they're going to need some assistance as the disease progresses. So just be there for them to listen. Very important. Don't make assumptions about what someone can or can't do that's very important um, and avoid making jokes about dementia yeah. because that can be very demeaning to someone because it's a disease that has to be respected so always respect the individual they still are the same person they just have this disease now so they are still the same person they were so I think that is the biggest part of reducing stigma is just understanding the disease absolutely mm -hmm. and I guess that's probably one of the roles that you do over at the uh, Alzheimer's Society is work on different things that uh, that help with that. Exactly, yes, mm -hmm. that's what we strive to do. Wonderful, mm -hmm. so um, I'm gonna jump back to the last, uh, when we were talking about going to see your doctor. At what point is it a good time to talk to your doctor? What would you say are maybe a few, maybe a quick checklist that uh, things that might be happening that maybe you think that it's a time to make an appointment? I think if you are noticing that you're struggling day to day, your memory loss is making you struggle throughout your day. That is a sign that there's something going on and you should get it checked out. Because right. we all have memory loss, but we can keep going with our day. Um, we might forget that word now and then, but that's normal. But if you notice that you're struggling to have conversations with people or you're starting to um, take yourself away from social situations because of your struggle so much with conversations, let someone know, tell your doctor, because life's hard enough as it is, and so you need to figure out what's causing this. Yeah, and there's mm -hmm. lots of things that's out there to help you. Lots and many different things, medications, our Alzheimer's Society. Um, I think it's really important to get the support you need. You need to have a diagnosis. Absolutely, mm -hmm. and is there a, any benefits to early detection? There are many benefits to early detection. The first being medications. Medications are more effective the earlier you get diagnosed. So that's the first benefit. The second benefit is that there is help for people living with dementia. So in order to get that help, you need to have a diagnosis. That's what the society is there for. Once you have a diagnosis, we will support you throughout the whole process. Also, family and friends, they want to help you as much as possible, but they won't know how to help you unless you have that diagnosis to explain why you're experiencing these changes. Um, also, in order to get an early diagnosis, you are reducing that stigma because you can say, I'm living well, I'm still working, I'm raising my family, and I've got this diagnosis, and we're going to deal with it because I have the support behind me. So you reduce that stigma because many people think that as soon as you're diagnosed, life stops but it doesn't. People live very well with dementia now because we have the support and the education. Wonderful. Well, we're yeah. going to take a quick break, Deanna. Okay. We're going to be right back and talk more with the Alzheimer's Society.